Maka's guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maka here. Welcome to my Resident Evil 4 Remake Collectibles Guide. In this video, I'll show you things like the Castellans, all of the treasures, the merchant requests, weapons, weapon parts, and crafting recipes, and even missable achievements and trophies. We'll be going chapter by chapter, starting with chapter one, but once you reach the first village, you can find the shotgun weapon. I've taken care of all of the enemies and kind of waited for them all to go away. And in the third building on the left, you can go in here, go up the stairs and find the shotgun. You can also hide in this building from the chainsaw guy as you're trying to kill time. From the shotgun, you can also bust through the window and then go up onto the roof to find our first treasure of the game, Velvet Blue. We will be buying treasure maps later on in the game, but this is gonna be the easiest way to grab them all. Additionally, from this location, we can roll off the roof and head down the path towards our main objective. There are two buildings here, one on the right and one on the left. Go into the one on the left to find the ruby in a small chest just to the right as you enter. We then move to the next area of the game, which is called the farm. There are a couple of enemies and things you can worry about here, but there's also a couple of things we should grab. First off, let's start with the treasure in the area by walking forward, vaulting over the fence, watching out for the pigs, and shooting the little collectible hanging from the windmill. When you shoot it, it should drop down, bust open, and you should be able to pick up the dirty pearl pendant inside. Additionally, in this area, we can complete our first merchant request. If you walk forward and look at the gate that we would go through to proceed, you may notice a blue note posted on the right hand side. Interact with that and we'll basically get a side mission where we have to destroy five blue medallions. So from that location, turn around and look into the farm, looking up through the window to find our first medallion. You can shoot these in any order. Not far from where we entered on the shed on the back side of it, you can find our second medallion. So take that out. Then go and hop on over the fence into the pig pen in the animal area. Look to your right hand side through the window to find our third medallion. And then what we can do is walk across near the windmill. There is a small shed. Look up into the rafters to find our fourth medallion. And then if you walk all the way through this kind of dead end by the big building in the middle, look behind this kind of small locked box and you'll find your fifth medallion. You'll have to turn these in once you meet the merchant later on in the game, so just be patient. We then kind of go back to the main story path by going through this gate and then through the door on your right. Don't worry, you will have to go here, but this is not far from where that blue note was, the merchant request. As you enter, you may uh, stumble upon a trap. I'm not sure if on the lowest difficulty the traps aren't there, but make sure you disarm it. Here you'll need a wooden cog, which is a key item for this area. And on your way to it, you will find a treasure. So hook around this middle area on the second story, go up onto the balcony and then drop down. You'll end up behind a fence that we couldn't get behind earlier. And here there is a kind of treasure chest where you can find a flagon. You'll also be given a small tutorial about how you can inlay gemstones into treasures to make them worth more. Additionally, you can go through the next door that's locked, look in the drawer to find a ruby, and you can find a kitchen knife on the table to the right, although you'll find probably 20 of these during your playthrough. Last but not least, we can find our first Castellan. This one is located in the lakeside settlement. Watch out for the bear traps on the ground. They will pinch your foot and basically stun you, and there's a bunch of enemies which I've already taken out. A Castellan is basically just a small statue that makes a small ticking noise. You can hear them, but if you shoot them and shoot all 16 of them, you'll end up getting an achievement or trophy and you'll also end up unlocking some weapons if you want to go for the 100%. But inside this building on the right, jump through the window, go to the second room and shoot it in the rafters. Moving on to chapter two, near the very beginning, you'll come to this area. There may be a couple of enemies, but there will be two pizza ovens directly in front of you and to your left. In the further one, you can find a sapphire. Weird place to put it. 
But a little bit later on, you'll regain your possessions. You'll be able to come outside and find the merchant for the first time. And you can pick up the pest control merchant request here from the table. And here we'll have to kill three rats. So we'll backtrack a little bit. We'll be able to find one in the hallway that connects the room from earlier to the merchant area. And then you'll be able to find two where we found our first collectible, the sapphire. There'll be one kind of where you hop through the window and one kind of more near the middle of the room. And this should take care of this merchant request. Head back to the merchant to turn in the requests. This should unlock an achievement or trophy for you, but it'll also unlock some of these credits you can use to spend on things via the trade menu. Here you'll be able to purchase the village treasure map, for example. You can also buy some of the weapons and recipes that the merchant will have available. We'll then eventually end up in the valley. There are a lot of enemies here and it can be a quite difficult area, but you'll end up at the key item, which is the hexagonal emblem. You have to grab this item to continue the story so you can't really miss it. From this area, you can drop down this hole. Watch out, there might be an enemy waiting for you. And we're gonna grab a small key because we're gonna need it for a treasure coming up soon. So make sure you grab the small key from this little cupboard area underneath where we grabbed the emblem that we would need for the story. Additionally, in the valley though, we can also grab a treasure, which is a ruby. What you wanna go do is basically go to the highest area. You need to come here to exit the area anyways, so it's pretty hard to miss. There will be a little chest and inside find the ruby. You can then use the wheel to open up the door, jump down the ledges to exit the area back to where you came from. Then we're back at the merchant, just to give you an idea of where we are on the map. And you can use the hexagonal emblem in the door to continue on. But what we're actually gonna do is backtrack to an area from earlier on to a small cupboard we couldn't open, but now we have the small key. So come through this door, and in this area we found all our weapons and inventory from earlier on. Interact with the little dresser drawer, use the small key to find the elegant mask inside. Feel free to encrust this mask in gems and you can sell the mask to the merchant for a lot of credits. And then you can use those credits to buy things like weapon upgrades or new weapons. You can then use the emblem to get access to the next area. Again, watch out for some of the enemies and a lot of bear traps here. But if you walk forward and crouch under a small hole through the left hand side, you'll find a chest with a sapphire inside. Moving on from this area, we can grab the Castellan, and we're gonna watch out again for bear traps and enemies, although the coast is kind of clear for a little bit here. If we head through the main path of the level, you'll end up going up these stairs. There will be, be a bunch of crows here, which you can take out for some extra money if you have the ammo. And you'll wanna go into this hut on the left and immediately turn to the right and look down to find the Castellan and make sure you shoot it to take it out. There are also a couple of treasures in this area. From the hut where the Castellan is, look directly up at the trees. There are a couple of ropes hanging from the trees and you can shoot down a treasure pod chime thing. Inside, find the sapphire. Additionally, watch out for the enemy here, but there is a well. And if you shoot down the arm from the well and then the metal box, you can find a pearl pendant inside. And then you can take out the enemies. After taking out the enemies, make sure you loot the chainsaw guy for an emerald, although it doesn't count as a treasure for the purposes of this collectibles guide, as it doesn't show up on the treasure map. But once you eventually end up going towards the building, you'll have to use the back door as the front door is locked. Again, a bunch of bear traps here. There's also a guy in the washroom to the left as you enter through this door. But in front of you, there is a small desk. Open the drawer to find a ruby inside. Last but not least for this level, go to the main room and in the far corner, you can find a small key. This will be a necessary item for us later on if we want to grab all the treasures. This is chapter three. We start off by revisiting the village. And now that we claimed the small key from the previous chapter, we can access an area that we weren't able to access before. You'll come down into the village from the insignia door and the smallest building directly in front of you down the ramp. Go inside that building, you've probably been in it, 
But if you go into the door and look on your very right hand side, you'll see a drawer you can open with a small key to grab the vintage compass. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move towards the kind of giant clock tower, which falls, and then you'll be able to get access into this door, which you previously weren't using the insignia key. Now, once you head inside, you can find a viper or a snake inside of the box on the left hand side, take it out and then put it in your inventory, save it for later. But most importantly, near the middle of the room, you can shoot down a container and inside find a treasure velvet blue and then you can move on through the next door to find our next merchant request which is called viper hunter for this we'll need to find three vipers one was found in the room we just passed through but i'll show you a bunch more later on in the mission then what we can do is we'll eventually get to the church but we can't get inside because we don't have the gear required so we're going to have to go through the front gate and go over here to the right hand side there's a side door we can enter and then go underground but instead we're going to continue along the path to the end turn to the left here you can find the elegant headdress treasure inside of the chest so make sure you grab it Directly next to that treasure, we can find another merchant request called Grave Robber. We have a couple of uh, merchant requests going at the same time here, but everything will be done by the end of the mission. And now that you have the Grave Robber, you want to run back to the church and head out the gate that we came from. We're basically backtracking a little bit here. And out front of the church, there is a little bit of a graveyard. And there are two specific tombstones we're looking for with a specific symbol on them. You can shoot out the medallion in the middle of it and it will break. And once you get these two that are next to each other, kind of near the middle, you'll have the merchant request done. There'll be a merchant coming up. You can cash this in. So through natural progression, you'll have to make your way towards the lake and you'll have to use this kind of scaffolding on the cliff's edge to get there. There is a bunch of enemies here, but in the first building on your left hand side inside of the box, you can find one of the three vipers you need. You can use your gun and this way you won't get bit and make sure you pick it up before you leave. We then continue along the main story path towards the quarry. Just before entering the quarry, you will be able to pretty obviously find this next merchant request for destroying the blue medallions. This is the second one we found of this variety. Additionally, from this location, if you have a flashbang, it's a great opportunity to grab the shield your eyes achievement slash trophy by going into your inventory, equipping a flashbang, and then throwing it near the middle of all of these crows. You need to take out three enemies with one flashbang. This one will take out probably seven, eight, nine, or even ten enemies, and you should grab the achievement. Now, before we move on, there's a couple more things to grab. We can find a ruby by looking up, and there are some wires hanging above where the crows were. I'm gonna use my sniper rifle to shoot down the container. Inside, I'll be able to find a ruby. So make sure you grab this before you move on. Additionally, in this area, if you look up and in front of yourself, you will be able to find your first blue medallion as a part of this second contract. You'll then eventually proceed. You'll end up at a merchant as a part of mandatory progress. There's a typewriter here. And in this room, you'll find your first three shooting ranges out of the 12 in the game. You can take down the elevator, participate in these challenges. Getting a good rank will earn you tokens. You can take those tokens and cash them in the machine at the back of the room in order to get charms, which you can equip to your briefcase, which will give you passive buffs, but you'll be able to revisit all of the shooting ranges later on if you want to go grab an S rank at the end of the game. Anyways, let's just proceed with the mission back to the merchant room. And if you head through these doors, make sure you pick up the hexagon piece on your way out. If you drop down this first ladder and look at the bridge directly under your feet, you'll be able to find your next blue medallion. You don't have to do them in order, but this is where you're naturally going to find this one. You'll then end up at the fish farm again through natural progression of the game. Bunch of enemies to take out, so I've already done that. 
but we will be able to find a couple more medallions in this area but there's a couple of things you want to grab so make sure you pay attention instead of just going for all the medallions go up the first ramp directly in front of you you can't miss it in the shed there's a medallion hanging there's a bunch of containers as well now here you can find the rest of the vipers you need the vipers will be either swimming in the water or running around on the decks and i would highly recommend plugging in a headset or turning up the volume on your tv as you can hear them kind of hissing around i was able to easily find four in this area again we need three total and i already told you about two of them so if you can find one more that's great but if you can find all four you'll get a couple extra bucks when you trade them in with the merchant so just make sure you have at least three viper skins in your inventory before you move on again the vipers are going to be all over the area either slithering in the water or on the decks Once we've taken care of the Viper Hunter, we can now go for the fourth blue medallion. So you should be able to spot it on your map or directly in front of you here from kind of this area. And it kind of hangs out in between these two wooden slats. It can be a little bit difficult to see depending on your color settings. And then what we can do is we can grab a couple more things. There is an antique pipe treasure in this area. And to get that, you'll want to drop down into the water and head behind this deck we were just on. Here you'll be able to shoot down a container, the container will break, and inside it will reveal the antique pipe, so make sure you pick it up. From the antique pipe, let's go grab the last medallion here, and you'll need to basically go to this medallion as there is a key item necessary for level progression here. But if you basically just drop down off of this deck, you'll see a bridge that you can kind of crawl under. In here, you'll be able to find your fifth blue medallion. So we're going to take that out and that completes that request, which we can turn in in a bit. But additionally, there's a couple things we'll want to grab. Here is hexagon piece B. You'll need it for the story, but I'm going to show it anyways because it's so close by. And then you can also find a small key in this shed. We're going to need this small key to open up a container coming up. And additionally, before you leave this area, you're going to want to grab the fuel tank before you leave, so grab the fuel tank. After grabbing the fuel tank through natural progression, you'll have to work your way back towards the docks. While you're here, go up and visit the merchant. Here, what we can do is we can now sell the vipers to him. And if you sell at least three, it will complete the viper hunter request. So make sure you sell three or else it won't complete. And you can also turn in the medallion and anything else you might have to him. But there's a couple things we can grab while we're here. We're going to head down the ladder and we'll be able to use the small key that we just grabbed with this cabinet right here to find the brass pocket watch inside. It's a treasure which you can then sell. Additionally, we can also find Castellan number three by following the dock and looking up on these boxes in between this small hole, shooting it in order to get it, and then we can go on and complete the mission. This is chapter four. We start off near the mural cave. This is a little bit into the chapter, but once we make our way to this area here on the map, we can find two important items. There is a key item, which is the old way shrine key on the right hand side. Make sure you grab that. And then there is a merchant request for the egg hunt on the left. Make sure you grab that as well. Now at this point in the chapter, you can hop on the boat and you can kind of go anywhere you want. I'm gonna arrange it to be as easy as possible. In the very middle of the lake, you can find a shipwrecked boat. On that boat, you can find two things of value to you. One of them is gonna be Alexandrite, which is a treasure. You can use this to basically put gemstones on other treasures for more value. And on the front of the ship, you can also find a new weapon called the Red Nine. Next up, we're going to go to the top of the lake. We've already been here, I think, actually near the end of chapter one. But now we have an insignia key. This will gain us entrance into an area we weren't previously able to go to. That will get us a key and then we can go and explore a house. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here we can grab now that we have all these new items. So dock your boat and then watch out for the enemies. But if you make your way to the right behind the house, you'll find this little shrine and you can use the old way shrine key 
in order to find the pearl bangle inside. Now, after the pearl bangle, let's go and use our insignia key by walking back and then taking a right hand turn to find the insignia door. Use the insignia key to gain access to this new area where we weren't able to go before. And there's going to be a bunch of things we can grab, all of them being very important. Walk forward and to the left to find the merchant request on the wooden post. This one is called Catch Me a Big Fish. And then the next thing we can do is go through the door and then up the ladder. There's some gunpowder in this room you should grab on your way back out. But as soon as you climb the ladder directly in front of you through the kind of fence posts, you'll be able to find a Castellan. So make sure you take it out. That should be your fourth one out of 16. There's pretty much one per chapter if you haven't realized. And then the next thing we can do is grab a small key, which is located on this little wagon here. We then basically just start backtracking to our boat and outside of the insignia key door, there will be some dog wolf things that attack you. So take care of those and watch out for more new enemies. And now we can go inside of the cabin that we didn't go in before, and that's because we have a small key. As you enter the front door, look to your left and open the drawer using the key to find the gold bar inside, which you can then trade in at the merchant. But additionally, in this house, you can also navigate through the house. There is no trap as we were here earlier and disarmed it. And you'll find a trap door that leads into the basement. Go into the basement, follow to the end of the path, and here you'll find a red gemstone ring, another thing that we can trade in for some decent money. We hop back onto our boat and make our way onto the lake. We're now going towards the kind of top right corner. We have to go here for one of the heads. That's kind of our main objective to grab two heads. One of them is gonna be here. So go into the cave, dock your boat, interact with the door. I'll show you the solution to that. But if you're looking to figure the solution out, there's these yellow kind of paintings. Uh, you can find the shapes on the walls, on the area, on the rocks. And if you discover those three shapes, you put them into the machine and you go inside. Here you can grab the head and the hexagon piece. We'll need both of those. I'm gonna skip them just for the purposes of this video. Head up the ladder, you'll find the container which you can shoot down to find a ruby inside. We then make our way down the lake a little bit along the right hand side near the middle. You'll be able to dock your boat here on this small little inlet and here you'll be able to find two important things. The first one we're going to grab near the back of the area is the golden egg. So make sure you grab the golden egg and this will basically complete the merchant request for egg hunt. We'll have to turn the golden egg in to actually uh, profit off of that. But additionally, on this island in the corner, you can also find a treasure, which is the Velvet Blue. Now, near the kind of bottom area of the lake, not far from the boathouse, we're not actually going to dock there, but we can complete the merchant request for Catch Me a Big Fish. And what we want to do is just to the left of the boathouse in the water, it will be moving, so you might have to search for it a little bit you should be able to find a large fish swimming. And if you stand near it and use your harpoon, you can take it out and then make sure you collect it and put it in your storage. It takes up a couple slots. Next up, what we're gonna do is go to the kind of bottom left of the lake. And there's uh, another little inlet here and you can approach and dock your boat. There's a couple of things, actually only really one thing we can grab here. This might take you a while. You will need the three hexagon pieces. You, we grabbed two in the last chapter and then one was close to the head that we grabbed. And if you put all three of the hexagons into this puzzle and you manipulate this puzzle for uh, about three minutes for me, you will be able to eventually solve it, and then once you solve it, it will open up and you'll find the depraved idol inside. Basically, you can isolate the one piece you want to move in the center of the puzzle and then manipulate the three corners to move the center piece where you need it. Then from the lake, we're going to follow this kind of thin and narrow tunnel system and near the end of it on the right hand side, you'll be able to dock your boat on a small little piece of land. 
And on this piece of land, there's two things that are of interest to us. The first one is the Splendid Bangle. You're going to jump up on the ledge, interact with this uh, Way Shrine uh, thing, use the key, open it up, and find the bangle inside. Additionally, from this location, if you look 90 degrees to your right and then look kind of directly above you, you should notice a container you can shoot down. You can use your pistol. I'll use the sniper rifle so you can see it nice and clear. Once you shoot it down, it will drop a treasure down to you, which is the Alexandrite. Following the cave tunnel system, you'll have to dock here at the large cave shrine in order to grab the second head of the statue. There will be a bunch of enemies here, but basically once you dock, you'll just want to follow the tunnel system for quite a while. You can sprint through, but watch out for enemies like I said earlier, and there will eventually be a split path. You can actually go left or right. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go left. And then not long after that split path, you can see a small kind of cavern to your right hand side. In that cavern, you can find a yellow herb, which is extremely useful. But if you look directly above you, there's also a container. You can pull out a weapon, shoot it down and inside find the velvet blue. At this point, you may want to follow some of the story by grabbing the head at the large cave shrine, going to the mural cave to get the church key. Once you have the church key, you can start making your way towards the church. To get to the church, you'll have to go from where we kind of started the mission, which is where the merchant is kind of near the middle of all of this action. And once at the merchant, you can now sell your golden egg and your bass in order to complete the egg hunt and fishing related side quests. From this merchant location, we're now ready to start heading towards the church, bust through these double doors. And now that we have the way shrine key, we can open up something that we weren't able to open up when we were here earlier, which is this shrine in the back of the area. Open it up to find the butterfly lamp inside. Feel free to encrust it with some gemstones and then sell it to the merchant. Last but not least, for this chapter, we've now made our way to the church, use the church key to get inside, and inside, near the altar on the right-hand side, you can find a small key. We're going to immediately use this small key to open up a treasure, which is the yellow diamond. Head back outside of the main doors of the church, swing a left, watching out for the enemy if you didn't take it out on your way here. And then there will be a door immediately to your left. You've probably been here before. There's a typewriter to save, but there's also a drawer where we can use our small key to open it up and find the yellow diamond inside. We move on to chapter five. At the very beginning of the chapter, you'll start in the church, go to the right hand side instead of the left hand side and through a small door. As the door opens up, look up to find a hanging container, shoot it down to find the yellow diamond inside. On the way to the main objective, you'll come by the merchant, which you have been through before. Right before the village square, you can find a savage mutt request. Once you reach the village square itself, you'll now have Ashley with you, which allows you to gain access into a building we previously couldn't get access to. She'll follow you, follow you around and you can go to this building on the far left from where you entered, interact with this small hole and she'll boost up and go to the front door to unlock it for you. And once she unlocks it for you, you can go inside and grab a treasure in a chest in front of you. It's the elegant bangle. Additionally, while she's with you, you can let her get snatched up by an enemy. Shoot that enemy, which will make that enemy drop her, and that is a missable achievement and trophy you can work on. This is the earliest you can do it. Now, instead of pushing towards the objective, we have to go to the village chief's manor. And this isn't a location we've already been, but now that we're here with Ashley, we can boost up into the attic. Additionally, you have to come here in order to complete the Savage Mutt merchant request. So 
just go here. It is away from the main objective, but it's worth it. Go into the bedroom upstairs, pull the latch, which will open up the ceiling hatch, interact with the boost in order to get Ashley to jump up and kick down the ladder for you. You can then climb up the ladder and you can find two things inside of the attic which are of importance to us. The first thing you want to grab is the Castellan, which is a little uh, ticking uh, kind of statue. And you can find this behind a box tucked underneath this ledge here. There's also a yellow herb inside of the attic, which again is very useful for raising your maximum health. Additionally, in this uh, area, you can crouch down at the back of the attic, go inside this little uh, secret hole, and you can find an anti-camera here. Now, once you leave the manor, navigate back towards the village square, and you'll notice that the Savage Mutt is now at this location. You may have spotted him on the way to the village square. And get ready for a small fight. Our goal here is to take him out in order to complete the merchant request. I would highly recommend using a rocket launcher if you have one. If not, that's okay. Another good option is to use frag grenades and stun grenades, as well as your shotgun to deal as much damage as quickly as possible. They will get infected after you take them out for the first time, so flashbangs are very useful. And just do as much damage as quickly as possible. Make sure you take as little damage as you can, as you don't want to waste your health potion on this or your herbs. Once you do take out the mutt, you should get, I believe, an emerald from it. But additionally, you will complete the merchant request and you can move on towards your main objective now. On the way towards the main objective, you'll reach the farm, which you have been at before, but now it's nighttime. There's a bunch of enemies. We've taken them out. There's a windmill here, and there is a way shrine. We now have the key for the way shrines, so we're going to use this key, open it up, and find the antique pipe inside. The merchant has also moved here, so you can encrust a lot of the treasures you picked up and trade them for a lot of money. I was able to buy the rocket launcher at this point in the game, and then you can move on. This is chapter six now, and not far from the merchant near the beginning of the level, you can find a yellow diamond here. And there's gonna be a bunch of enemies I found using a rifle. Taking them out from really far away was very useful. But once you do that, if you kind of move forward from where we entered and hook around to your left, there's a staircase, you go up it, and there's a yellow diamond. Then you can continue forward, watch out for all of the bear traps. I think there's like five or six of them here. And then head through the double doors. And as you head through the double doors, depending on which gun you want to use, you can find a Castellan on the right hand side, not far from the kind of fire pit in the corner there. I'm gonna use a sniper rifle and just grab it right away from where we entered, but feel free to walk up to it and grab it if you prefer. Additionally, in this area, you can find the Chalice of Atonement by walking forward, turning left, hooking around into this building. Watch out, there's usually an enemy in here, but if you take them out, you can find it inside of the treasure chest. You'll then follow the main mission objective towards this checkpoint area. Our goal here is to find a crank that will open up a door and let us move forward. But before you drop down into the center building to find that crank, what we want to do is we want to get on the boardwalk using the stairs in the back and kind of head back towards the area where we entered from. Here you can find a way shrine, use the key in order to open it up, finding an elegant headdress inside. Last but not least, near the very end of the chapter, as you approach the castle, you'll come around this bend and there will be a tree above you. Look up, shoot down the container to find the emerald inside. This should be your last treasure for the village, unlocking an achievement or trophy. This is chapter seven now, and near the beginning, you can find the merchant, talk to them, sell off some stuff, and if you navigate into a small tunnel, kind of around the corner and behind them, you can find a treasure. Next up, follow along the main path here. You'll end up in the chapel. You'll be introduced to a new enemy type. And upon defeating this enemy, you'll receive a weapon for the first time known as the boot knife. I would highly recommend holding onto this knife 
until I tell you to use it later on in this video. So save it, don't use it against any enemies for now. We've made our way up the kind of side walls of the castle a little bit and we are approaching the gate. There will be a bunch of trebuchets trying to take you out and at the top of the stairs you can turn right and go across the bridge to jump down into this hole. You have to come here as a part of the main storyline, so don't worry, just keep playing if you're not here yet. Once you're here though, shoot the little container and that will lift up the cannon. We'll need to use the cannon in order to proceed with the mission, but there's also something we can do with it in order to get an achievement or trophy. We'll get there in a second. Once that cannon is raised, you have to use this ladder to get back up to the top. Again, trying to watch out for the fireballs if possible. And if you just continue along the path, you'll end up having to go through this door on our right. But just past that door, you can find a treasure chest with the elegant bangle inside. Now, additionally, what we can do is we can go over to the cannon, which we have to use to destroy the main gate. You can also use it to destroy some of the trebuchets. And to get the overkill achievement slash trophy, we have to kill one of these zealots, I believe they're called with the cannon. So make sure they don't take Ashley, use the cannon and then shoot it on the bridge with these enemies as they chase you. The achievement or trophy should unlock here. Now, after using the cannon to destroy the main gate and hopefully all the trebuchets, we can grab the merchant request called destroy the blue medallions number three. Having a sniper here is pretty useful, but standing at the cannon and facing one of the walls of the castle, you should be able to see two pretty much right in front of you. You can use a pistol though, but a snipered scope will help you. Directly behind you from the cannon, you can find your third out of six. You can then drop down to where we were earlier, and then Ashley will drop down on you and move your aim right as you're about to shoot. And there is a fourth one in this little spiral elevator area where the cannon came from. Then we can move back towards where that treasure chest was and climb up the ladder. As you climb up the ladder, look down and to your left and you should notice the little blue marker sticking out. I believe it's attached to a tree. I do miss a bullet, so don't miss a bullet like me. And uh, Ashley likes to push you when you're about to shoot. So that's number five and then move over to where that chest was that we grabbed earlier and that's going to be number six. This will complete the merchant request even though we never picked up the contract like the piece of paper. You can still now just turn it in and get your reward. Once inside the castle there's two things I want you to really pay attention to. Go inside and find the merchant on your right hand side. Here you can turn in your contract and then use the currency to buy the treasure map for the castle. You don't have to because I'll show you all of them, but it helps. Additionally, please repair your knife if it is damaged. You'll want it for later. After that, go to the audience chamber, which is the large room directly in front of you. If you were to open your map, you'll see that there's like five or six treasures here, but we can only really grab kind of one or two from where we start. So walk forward and look to the left. You'll be able to boost Ashley through the door or through the little hole in the wall, actually. And then she'll open the door for you. This is the main mission path that we have to go through, so you can't really miss it. Once she opens up the door, you may notice the crack in the wall in front of you, but instead we're going to turn to the right hand side and follow the path underneath the ground to the other side, finding the elegant perfume bottle inside the inside the treasure chest. From here, head back to the main mission path, and now you'll want to squeeze yourself through that crack in the wall. And as soon as you get through, you want to take out a gun, look to your left, and you should notice a container on a string hanging from the roof. Shoot it down to drop the ruby inside. Feel free to slash your way through the wood to get to it or use your gun. Next up, I'm going to show you how to grab the never heard it coming achievement slash trophy. Follow the main mission path until you end up grabbing the dungeon key. After you grab the dungeon key, you'll turn around and as a scripted event, you will fall through the ground. Feel free to watch or skip the cinematic here. And afterwards, you will find this enemy directly in front of you. 
which is called a Garador. Now what you want to do is you want to sprint through the hallway and the Garador can't see you, but they can hear you. Sprinting through the hall and rattling the chain chains will make them follow you into this room. Now, in order to grab this missable achievement slash trophy, you have to defeat this enemy by only using knives. And what you want to do is you want to sneak up behind them and use your knife to stab them in the back. After you do that, you'll have to wait about five or 10 seconds for them to calm down again before you can repeat this process. You have to do it a total of five times on the normal difficulty. I don't know if it's more or less on the lower difficulties, so you will need at least two knives. Taking them out and making sure not to damage them with anything but the knife will unlock this. After following your main mission objective, going back upstairs through the newly opened door and up the ladder in front of you, you'll be able to grab two collectibles in this room. Navigate through the hallway and you'll find some spinel directly in front of you on the table. And you can also turn to the right hand side and find a Castellan on the shelves, so get rid of both of those. You will then make your way into the treasury. You'll need to solve some puzzles here with the swords. The correct solution is iron sword goes on the left, then the golden sword, then the bloodied sword, and on the far right is the rusted sword. Once you put all of the swords in the correct places, it will open up the door and allow you to continue through. As you continue through this door and around the bend in the hallway, you will find a treasure chest in front of you with the gold bangle. Last but not least for this chapter, walk through the door on your left hand side, turn to the right, and at the far end, make sure you kick down the ladder so that you can come back up here without having to run through the entire level again. After you kick down this ladder, use the chandeliers in the middle of the room to cross from this side to the other side. So stand at the edge, interact with the chandelier to get across, and then once across, turn to the right to locate the hole in the floor that we can drop down on, and here you'll land on a treasure chest with the golden hourglass inside. Starting off with chapter eight now, and near the beginning of the chapter, you'll enter this large room. There will be a ton of enemies. You're not really meant to take them out one by one. You're meant to go into the room, use the explosives. You can use the chandelier. And eventually, once you clear them all out, the main enemy will drop you a crimson lantern, which you can use to move on. But additionally, in this room, before you take that lantern and leave, you can find a treasure near the back of the room on the middle floor with a mirror with pearls and rubies. You'll then continue and end up inside of a room called the Bindery. And in here, you'll have a door that you'll need to solve a puzzle. But inside the room, there's a very obvious chest. You can grab that chest and inside find the extravagant clock. I believe you can encrust it with gems and sell it for a decent amount of money. Now in this room, there's also a locked drawer, so we'll need a small key. Luckily, that small key is pretty close uh, by. We can grab it and then just return to the room. So we're going to grab the three stones. The fourth stone is already in the puzzle, and then you can solve that puzzle and move on. Basically, you're aligning the red and then the blue is kind of washed out, but you figure it out kind of through trial and error. And then through that door, you can just walk through the hallway. Keep an eye out to your left. There will be a desk. And on that desk, there will be a small key. So we're going to grab that small key as we do need it in order to open up a drawer. With that small key now acquired, go back to the room we were just in, the bindery. And inside of that room, there is a drawer. You can use the key on that drawer. I've probably mentioned it a couple times now, but inside you'll find a brass pocket watch. A little bit later on, we're now like inside of the castle walls and navigating through the level. Don't be confused as to where exactly I am. It can be a little bit confusing, but you have to come here and you have to interact with this machine right here that I'm interacting with. 
And if you switch it from a sun to a moon, this should open up a door that we previously didn't have access to. And if you now follow this door and climb up a ledge, you'll be able to climb up a second ledge and then drop down into the floor. Dropping down into the floor, there might be an enemy here if you didn't shoot them already, but you might have gotten them through the metal gates. And if you hook around to the right, you'll be able to find a treasure chest with the ornate necklace inside. You'll then end up outside and there's a little bit of a so-called boss battle. You don't actually shoot at this boss, you just try to stay alive and navigate to the right areas. What you're trying to do is time the runs so that you are uh, not getting hit by the boulders they're throwing. Easier said than done in this footage. But from where this kind of boss fight begins, you want to drop down and to the right and head back to where you came from. Using the ladder allows you to get access to the kind of rooftop here, which we weren't able to get on top of before. And there are two collectibles while you're here. If you navigate around the circular edge all the way to the backside, you'll find the Castellan sitting on top of some uh, rice bags, cement. I don't know what that is. Um, and then if you go into the kind of center of this area, you can also find a treasure chest with an emerald inside before you loot everything. And last but not least for this chapter, we can find a ruby. So you're going to be navigating to the left from where the boss battle began and you'll have to come here. This is another area you have to go to. There will be an enemy that attacks you after you drop down and then you'll have to go on the second story across this ledge, watching out for the boulder that the uh, boss is kind of throwing at you. You'll go through like the moon door. You'll be able to interact with the lever and then turn it into a sun. This will allow you to drop onto the bottom story. And once you drop down, turn around and now you'll be able to go into this kind of side room. And if you shoot the container on the ceiling, it'll drop down revealing the ruby. Now on chapter nine, near the beginning of the chapter, we can walk forward and grab the Castellan. Now this is a little bit of a hedge maze, but our goal here is to grab all three of the flags. But if you navigate kind of on the one main path away from all of the flags and the levers, at the very end, there is a dead end where you can find, I believe, some ammo on a bin here. But if you also aim in the dark corner, you'll be able to find a Castellan. I already shot mine, so you won't see it. Now, as you navigate the hedge maze and you work your way towards the lever in the kind of bottom right corner, you'll pass by this fountain. And instead of going underneath the kind of small bridge, turn to your left to find this hidden pocket room inside finding a vase, which you can smash, I believe ammo inside and an elegant chessboard. Now, the next step you want to do once you've actually opened up all of the levers and have the main door open. At this point, you should be able to actually navigate backwards to an area that we were in earlier in the game, I believe in the last chapter. However, we were there without Ashley and now we have Ashley, so we'll be able to gain access to an area that we weren't previously able to gain access to. What you want to do is you want to run towards the merchant and then you'll end up in this area where you first met the kind of guy in the red cloak with the crimson lantern. And then what you want to do is jump down into the pit and go through the Crimson Lantern doors, finding a finding a hole in the wall that you can boost through in order to find a treasure inside. Watch out, there may be an enemy that attacks you here, so keep that in mind. But once you do get the boost done and the doors open from the other side, go inside and grab that treasure. You then want to head back to the courtyard and enter into the Grand Hall, which is where most of this mission takes place. As you enter directly in front of you and a little bit to your right, you'll notice a statue with a container hanging from its hand with Alexandrite inside. Not far from this Alexandrite, there is a door. You can enter through that door and look on the desk to your right as you enter in order to find a merchant request for destroying the blue medallions. Additionally, you'll find an elevator in here. You can take this elevator ride and work on shooting ranges 2A, 2B, and 2C, which you will now have unlocked. 
Now from the merchant room, we can go and destroy a couple of the blue medallions. Walk out into the grand hall and go back towards the door we entered from, looking to your left while going in this direction, and you'll find one hanging up on the wall. Then go down the hall and at the very end where you have to input the three statue heads, there should be another blue medallion hanging near the pillar in the back. Make sure you get all the collectibles up until I tell you before putting the three statue heads on the platforms. Additionally, here you can find another merchant request called more pest control for shooting three rats. And then you can enter through that door and find a rat pretty much directly in front of you as you enter for your first of three. Then we can go deeper into the serpent head room. There's a puzzle here you'll have to solve by ringing two of the right bells in order to open up the cage and grab the serpent head. But at the very back end of the room between the blinds, you can find your next medallion. So make sure you do that before grabbing the serpent head and leaving. We then go back into the grand hall and there's another blue medallion we can shoot here hidden inside of the main chandelier. If standing on the podium where the three statue heads go, you can find it slightly off to the right. You can also go up the stairs to get a little bit closer to it. Additionally, if we then go up these stairs and through the door on our right hand side, we can find a small key which we'll be able to use to open a drawer later on. The key can be found inside of this desk on the left hand side. And then you can move forward towards the lion's head. So go down this hallway, turn to your right and do not drop down into the center yet. Instead, go to the right and then look in this little alcove to find your next blue medallion. You can now drop down, grab the lion's head and complete the fight. After grabbing the lion's head and opening the gate with Ashley, you can walk forward and you should be able to spot a rat at the end of the hallway, although it does walk back and forth. So don't worry if it's not there for you. Just wait a couple seconds. Additionally, inside of this chest, we will get the cubic device, which is a key that we can use to open up certain compartments. You'll then loop back into the grand hall with two of the three statue heads. So let's go and revisit the merchant room now that we have the cubic device. And in the corner, you can use that cubic device to open up this kind of, I don't know, chest. And all you'd have to do is line up the correct shapes, put the cube in, and inside you can find a butterfly lamp, which you can uh, inlay gemstones in and sell. Now, additionally, in this merchant room, there's this side door here. And if you go through this side door and down the stairs, you'll be able to basically fast travel back to the castle we came from earlier. So we're gonna do this because now that we have a small key in the cubic device, there were two collectibles that we left behind we couldn't grab earlier. After the little cart ride, go through the main door in front of you, through the next door, and then take a left-hand turn through the large doors. There will be a bunch of enemies here I've taken out, so feel free to do so as well. Now that you have taken out all the enemies, walk forward and look to the right near the middle of the room. You'll find a drawer where you can use your small key to gain access and find the gold bar inside. Additionally, in the corner of this room, there is a smaller room and you can use the cubic device, solve the puzzle to open it up. And inside you will find what I believe is called the Justitia statue. You then want to backtrack using the fast travel back to the kind of grand hall. And here you want to be able to move towards the gallery, which is connected via an upstairs door. Once you go inside of the gallery, you'll see the last statue head, but there will be a large fight that you need to complete. Once you complete that fight, you should be able to come up a ladder and you have to interact with the lever that I interacted with at the beginning of the clip in order to complete the level. After you interact with that lever, you can just backtrack and go underneath the bridge in order to find the yellow diamond. Additionally, you can also go close to the statue head and then turn around to where we entered from to find our sixth blue medallion. Make sure you shoot that before grabbing the final statue head. Only once you grabbed all of those collectibles should you put the three statue heads in as doing this will cause you to have to play as Ashley. Follow the main path until you reach the bunch of keys. You'll need to grab these as a part of main story progression. 
And then you'll be able to come down the stairs and there will be these knights who come and try to kill you. And what you'll need to do is you can go to the left as soon as you spot the first one down the hall and then crouch through the bookcase going inside to find a chest with the elegant perfume bottle inside. Use the second key to open it. You'll then use the third key to go on an elevator ride and near the top, Ashley will have to kind of open up the doors to get on out. And once you do this, you should notice a little bit of a cutscene. And there is a treasure just after this cutscene, which is the sapphire. So after that cutscene, just look towards where we have to go. And there's a small little uh, secret path in these bookcases and a treasure chest at the end of them with the sapphire. You can use the fourth key to open it up, by the way, if it's not obvious. After this, our main objective is to grab the Salazar family insignia. We'll need this as basically a key to be able to reach and meet up with Leon. And what we need to do is we need to go through the three clocks and use them basically as doors to get to the kind of final area where we can grab that insignia. And not far from that insignia, there is a treasure, which is the emerald. To open up the clocks, you need to input the time 1104 if you are on the normal or assisted difficulty and the time 7 if you're on hardcore or even professional difficulty. There are, will be three clocks and it's a somewhat linear path. The important thing here is that all of the enemies will one hit you. So you do have to be a little bit careful, but you can use the left trigger to shine your light on the enemies, which will basically temporarily freeze them. Again, all three solutions to the clocks are 1104 and you're just trying to basically reach the basement. So at this point, I'm going to fast forward the clip to show the elevator ride down. In this final room, we'll have to toll three bells, so I'm just going to work my way around the room clockwise from where we entered. So close and to the left and then further and to the left, far and to the right and then close and to the right. Making sure you don't get attacked by any of the knights that you are awakening as you toll these bells. If they get a little bit too close for comfort, make sure you use that left trigger to shine the light onto them that will freeze them. But your goal here is to get through the door that you just opened on your way to the insignia. As you cross through this door frame, you should be safe because of the blue flames inside this room. The enemies can't follow you in. Go around the pieces of wood to reveal a chest using the first key on this chest to find the emerald inside and then grabbing the insignia down the hall. Now moving on to chapter 10, we start from the very beginning of the chapter where the statue is playing as Leon. If you walk through the door pretty much right in front of you, on the desk, you can find a merchant request called Merciless Knight. So make sure you pick that up and let's go do it. Then if you go through this next door, we can actually just finish the more pest control merchant request. Around the corner, we have to go here for what we're doing, but right as you come through this hole, you should notice a rat on the ground in front of you. It does roam back and forth very slowly. So just take a peek around the corner if you don't see it right away. Take out the rat for all three, and now we can try the Merciless Knight Merchant Request. In order to do this, we're going to start by heading towards the library, which is where we need to go for our main objective. Instead of going into the library, go through the clock door we accessed earlier with Ashley and go all the way down the steps and then into the elevator. I'm going to fast forward the clip a little bit because you know exactly where we're going. You'll end up in the room with three knights. The golden knight is our main priority here, but if you take out the two smaller knights first, it does make that fight a lot easier. Upon defeating the golden knight, you will get the merchant request completed and make sure to loot all three of these knights to get some pretty good um, gemstones that you can later apply to treasures and uh, everything. I'm not going to show you the whole fight. You know the drill by now. Shoot the red kind of alien looking bit 
until the head explodes and you are good to go and head back upstairs. Now we're heading back upstairs around the corner and you'll notice the library kind of to my right. So up these stairs, we're going through the first clock and then take a right hand turn to end up in the library. In the library, there may be two knights, which I've already taken care of. And instead of continuing through the library, we want to go to the right hand side where we picked up the bunch of keys when we were playing as Ashley. And across from that, you will notice that there is basically a safe embedded into the wall and you can interact with it and use the cubic device to solve the puzzle, open up this safe and inside we can find a very rare weapon because there's not a lot of weapons in the game that you can find kind of scattered about. This is the assault rifle, so pick it up and store it. Make sure you have enough room to carry it. Next up, we are now leaving the library from the other staircase. This is towards our main objective. And at the top of the steps, this is where Ashley would have put the insignia into the door to reunite with Leon. And now that we're here with Leon, we can use the cubic device on this cabinet to open it up and find the Golden Lynx treasure inside, which I believe trades for a decent value. Next up, we've reached the ballroom. Watch out, there's quite a few flying enemies in here that can really chew through your ammo if you're not careful. And there are two treasures we can grab. From kind of the bottom floor middle area, you can go underneath this rubble, shoot down the container and grab the ruby. You can also go kind of behind the staircase that we use to get into the area. This will lead you to a ladder you need to use to get to the lever, but behind that ladder, there's also a chest. In that chest, you can find the ornate beetle. We've then made a bit of progress into the mission. We've ended up inside of the depths, and at the end of the depths, you'll come out of the water and onto this uh, staircase. And this one's pretty obvious, but directly in front of you, instead of going through the crack in the wall to your left to continue the mission, find the elegant crown on the ground. From the elegant crown, you can turn and head through the hole in the wall. In this first room, there's a yellow herb, so you'll want to pick that up. It's very useful, as I've been pointing them out throughout the video. But in order to get the next treasure, which is a red barrel gemstone, head up the ladder and then through this hallway and keep to the left when possible. And you should notice a container hanging from the ceiling pipe on your left. Shoot it down to grab it. Now the next thing we can do is grab the astute appraiser achievement slash trophy. Since we have the elegant crown, it has five gemstone slots. And if we apply five unique gemstones and make sure that they are the five rarest gemstones, this will add up to a total value of 100,000 credits. And with this, you can then trade it or sell it to the merchant for 100,000 and the astute appraiser achievement or trophy should unlock. If you don't have five unique rare gemstones, just hold on to this for later. Next up, just across the hall from the door that leads to the merchant, you can find the Castellan for this chapter through the kind of hole in the wall. It's pretty tough to see though. Now you'll make some progress into the mission and you'll have to power the elevator using the kind of power controls. So you'll activate that, you'll get attacked and defend yourself, and then you can start navigating your way back towards the elevator. Don't go into the elevator until you complete watching this video, by the way. There's a little trick that I'm going to show you on uh, how to unlock an achievement or trophy that you can easily miss. But after you go through the first door, you'll now be going back from the hallway that we came from and there was a previously locked door on your left and you'll be able to go through that door now. It was on your right when you came into the area, on your left when you're leaving. You'll now be able to go in there and there is a chest. At the end of the hall, you can open it up and find the yellow diamond inside. Last but not least in this chapter, you can grab the wave goodbye right hand achievement slash trophy. And for this, we actually have to kill the monster that's chasing us before going to the elevator and leaving the mission. Basically, what you want to do is you want to use the movement and the map 
in order to bait this creature to follow you to the nitrogen showers. There are four total nitrogen showers. One is in the power supply room at the beginning when it attacks you. The other one is across the hall from the yellow diamond treasure. One is on the way to the elevator uh, room. And the last one can be found on the far end of the elevator room if you were to go through it and then kind of backtrack further from where we came. Either way, you want to basically bait the monster into these nitrogen uh, traps, which will allow you to basically take five or 10 seconds to do as much damage as you want. And to get this achievement or trophy to unlock, we actually have to take it down completely. You don't have to use the nitrogen showers, but it makes it a heck of a lot easier, trust me. If you feel like you took too much damage or wasted too much ammo, feel free to reload the last autosave, which will take you back to the power supply room as long as you're not on the highest difficulty. Just make sure if you do that, you recollect the treasure. After you take this out, before you leave the mission, you'll unlock the achievement or trophy. Make sure to loot it for a pretty valuable treasure as well. Hopping on board with chapter 11. At the very beginning of the chapter, you'll see a very obvious merchant pretty much directly in front of you. He is also standing in front of an elevator. You can take that elevator down to shooting ranges 3A, 3B, and 3C, which are definitely the toughest so far. And you'll need to use some tricks like shooting the dynamite in order to clear these. Next up, you'll reach the mines. There will be a bunch of enemies here, so be careful. They can be pretty tough, and ammo's pretty hard to come by in the last few chapters. But once you take them all out, if you go up the steps and to your right from where you entered and look up, you'll see the hanging container, which you can shoot down and grab the sapphire inside. You'll then interact with the controls, which will put the drawbridge down so you can now cross and get the dynamite, which is the key item here that we're going to need to progress the story. But if you kind of go a little bit further along the path after the dynamite and hang a left hand turn in this small tunnel, you'll find the golden hourglass. A little bit later on in the chapter, you will go past the blast furnace. You'll end up at this checkpoint. I recommend using the save here just in case and then you'll hop into a minecart and this happens in two parts but basically there's a missable achievement slash trophy called hope you like thrill rides and it's for making it through both of the minecart sections in the tunnel without taking any damage and you'll see your damage in the bottom left hand corner just make sure that if at any point you take damage or if at any point you're about to finish this minecart section and you're not at 100% that you just pause the game and reload your last checkpoint. I'm not going to show the entire minecart trip here as it's pretty self-explanatory and only lasts about three minutes. If you get hit, you can reload the last checkpoint and you'll basically have everything memorized. Just make sure that you are at full health when you come to your first stop at the stopover. Now, once at the stopover itself, there will be two more collectibles. After getting off of the minecart, you can walk forward and watch out for the enemies, which I've already taken out, go up the stairs and then turn into the building directly on your right. And if you look up and on the ledge, you can find Castellan number 11. So take that out. Additionally, here you can find a flagon. Does anyone know what that even means? Or I'm not 100% sure. I can see what it is, but I don't actually know this word. You can find that in the chest in the balcony. Just after the stopover, you can get prepared for Hope You Like Thrill Rides Part 2, the second of all two minecart sections. This one also lasts about three minutes in total from beginning to end. And if you take damage, immediately pause and reload the last checkpoint as this minecart ride ends in a cinematic. If you reach that cinematic with 100% health on your minecart, the achievement or trophy should unlock.
Last but not least for this chapter, you will reach the hive and there's a merchant request here, which we'll be able to complete right away, as well as a gold bar treasure. So once you drop down because you can't reach the elevator, you'll walk across the path and notice the pretty obvious merchant request in front of you. You don't have to pick it up, but it helps you kind of get an idea of what we're gonna do. Now watch out for all of the insect enemies that are flying around, but if you go up the uh, main path here and then look up at the main hive directly in front of you, you should see the kind of beating yellow eyes in the hive or the, you know, the blisters, whatever you wanna call them. Shoot all four of them, but from here you can only see the first three. Use a pistol or a sniper rifle, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have ammo for. Now from here we can move on and grab the treasure. To find the treasure, continue up the main path and you should see an explosive barrel in front of you. If you shoot this explosive barrel specifically, it should clear a hole in the wall that will allow you to gain access to a tunnel with treasure at the end. This is also a large gold bar, so it trades for even more. Last but not least for this chapter, let's complete the merchant request by exiting the tunnel and heading up the hill towards the elevator, looking up as we exit back into the chasm. Here you should be able to locate the fourth hive blister, take it out, and that's that. Hopping on board on chapter 12, near the very beginning of the chapter, you'll take an elevator up at the top of the elevator, walk forward, and you'll notice a small key on the desk, so we'll grab that. Additionally, in this room, you can find two merchant requests, which are the Jewel Thief and the Disgrace of the Salazar family. These are also great clues to let you know that there is some backtracking coming up. Do not ride the cart to the clock tower yet. Instead, we'll be backtracking pretty much everywhere we've been since chapter eight, starting off with the throne room, which is from the ballroom to the very end of the area. And once inside the throne room, go up the stairs and turn to the right. Here you'll find a device where you can use your cube to open it up and find the gold chicken egg treasure inside. Now this treasure is decent on its own, but we actually specifically need it for the merchant request, which takes place in this room. Go to your inventory and equip the golden egg. Now that you have that, go and throw this egg at the painting of the Salazar family on the other side of the throne room to complete this merchant request. That should do it. Now we're gonna backtrack in the complete opposite direction. Go through the courtyard and then go out the back end of the courtyard towards the merchant. Here you'll be able to find a bird sitting on top of this ledge. It can be a little bit hard to see, but you should be able to see it. There is a little bit of a paint outline on it. And if you shoot down the little nest, you'll be able to find a scratched emerald that falls down. Take this emerald through the door to the merchant and then sell the scratched emerald to complete the jewel thief request. After that, head back to the courtyard and then take the stairs towards the castle defense walls. This is where chapter eight took place, but now we have a small key that we can use. So make your way down here, watch out for the enemies. And in this first kind of barracks, I'm not really sure what it's called, go through the door inside to the right and behind the ladder, you'll be able to find that locked drawer. Use your small key on this drawer to find the ornate beetle inside. So now we're finally done backtracking through the castle area and we can now head back to the ballroom merchant and take the gondola across towards the clock tower. There's a bunch of things that are gonna happen in this clock tower. It's kind of a vital moment of the game. But inside you can find Castellan number 12 by heading inside, watching out for the enemies and going to the far left corner of the room to easily spot it hanging out. Additionally, in this room on this floor, you can find a treasure chest close to the door that you entered from, but just behind some debris and inside finding a gold bar. At this point, you can start ascending the clock tower slowly. After about one rotation of the spiral stairs, look above your head. You'll notice a container that you can shoot down, revealing Alexandrite inside.
We've now reached the top of the clock tower. Do not ride the elevator yet. You would have dodged a couple of these metal balls with spikes on them on the way up. And once you reach the top, there are two collectibles you want to grab before getting on the elevator. So from the lever that drops the balls, you can come up on this balcony. There's a treasure chest and inside you can find the mirror with pearls and rubies. Then from here, you can drop down. This will get you a checkpoint and you can unlock the treasure chest with the extravagant clock inside. At this point, we're going to grab the capacity compliance achievement slash trophy for reaching the top of the clock tower without any enemies getting on top of the elevator. And what you'll need here is some really decent weapons and some decent aim as well. You'll need a lot of ammo too, so if you are completely low on ammo, you may have some trouble here. But there are going to be two of the kind of large red enemies with the Crimson Lanterns. Those are going to be a priority when they spawn at the very beginning and about halfway through. There's going to be a lot of explosive barrels as well that you can shoot. But our goal here is to make sure that enemies don't get too close to us. And after taking out the first Crimson Lantern enemy, there will be an archer we can take out. We can then use an explosive to take out two more enemies. And then it starts getting a little bit more crowded near the halfway point here. And I'm going to switch to my shotgun so that I can basically one hit at all the enemies as it gets too crowded and these enemies quickly jump towards the uh, clock tower elevator. And if they mount you, then you uh, cannot get this achievement or trophy. If they do get on your elevator, just pause the game and reload the last checkpoint and try again. This one took me about five to ten attempts. After taking out the second Crimson Lantern enemy, watch out for two specific enemies here. Uh, way up high, they'll climb the ladders and then try to jump down at you from above. So it can be very easy to lose at this point. Make sure you don't let enemies climb the ladder when possible and take out the enemies at the top of that ladder whenever you can. Otherwise here, switch to something that's going to do a lot of damage really quickly, like a shotgun or even a magnum. If you're really struggling, you can try to go back to the merchant before you ride the elevator to upgrade some of your weapons or buy better weapons. But if you're able to reach the top and you haven't been boarded on the elevator, the achievement or trophy should unlock. If it doesn't, reload the autosave. You then make your way to the outside of the clock tower and this will be our final treasure for the castle area. So you'll navigate across this scaffolding, which does crack a little bit, so you'll need to crouch. There will be enemies firing at you. If you have a long distance weapon, you can take them out. But after you get halfway through the scaffolding, scaffolding, look up and to your left to find a container, shoot it down to find the yellow diamond inside, hopefully unlocking your achievement or trophy. Last but not least, for Chapter 12, we're going to grab the You Talk Too Much achievement slash trophy for throwing a grenade into Ramon Salazar's mouth. So this is the final boss battle of Chapter 12. So you will need at least one grenade, but I believe you can loot one just before this fight or you can craft one in your inventory. But what you're waiting for is for the boss to attack you up close and personal. They'll open their mouth and then you have to throw and connect the grenade. This should unlock the achievement or trophy. For some reason, I still died here, but it unlocked without a problem. Hopping on board with chapter number 14, near the very beginning, you cannot help but run into the merchant who will be directly in front of you. You can go and trade with them in order to get a treasure map for the new location, the island. Just after that, you will reach the wharf and there will be a bunch of enemies and a bunch of red laser turrets. So we're going to have to hop on through this window in order to make progress. And we're, then we're going to kind of backtrack almost a little bit. We're going to go towards that first turret and go behind it in order to disarm it. After you disarm it, basically it was shining its turret laser at a treasure. So go and just walk up to that treasure and now you can open it safely. And inside you'll find the pearl bangle.
We've then climbed up a little bit. We're above the wharf now, and we're working our way kind of up this mountain here, and there will be a building on your right-hand side, kind of like a barracks. And there will be a bunch of enemies. We've taken them out as well. But if you make your way to the back, you'll notice that there is a barrel that you can shoot. It will explode a mine shaft. And inside, you can find a treasure with a golden lynx. If you put gemstones in it, it can be worth over 60 grand. We're then working our way towards our main objective. And that is going to be in the surveillance room. And on our way there, there will be this split path where we can go up a staircase to the left or down the staircase to the right. We're going to go down the staircase to the right, and there are two collectibles in this area. So don't run away until you watch the whole clip. Inside of the chest, you can find the elegant crown, the most valuable piece of treasure in the game. Additionally, behind this kind of green forklift, you can find Castellan number 13. Now we work our way towards our main objective, which is the surveillance. Uh, you'll notice the icon on your map, but watch out for the trap as you approach the door, by the way. But you'll be able to go through that door into the room. We're going to be indoors for the rest of the mission, pretty much. And then inside on a chest to the right hand side, sitting on a ledge, you can find some velvet blue. You'll then reach these hallways through utilities. They're very narrow. You'll notice that there's a lot of tiling on the ground and on the walls. And as you pass through this door, you're going to take a hook around to your left. There's a small little uh, alcove in here where you can find some treasure. So grab it before you move on. You'll then come and you'll have to interact with the power control lever. This will basically turn on the power in certain parts of the facility, allowing you to gain access into the lab where you'll find keycard level one. But after you do this, you'll be able to open up a door and you'll be able to go inside of this area to smash the glass and find the rare red barrel gem. Just after that, you'll want to go in that top right corner room. In here, you can grab the level one key card and doing this will trigger an enemy to chase you around, which is very tough to kill. I wouldn't recommend wasting your ammo. Instead, you can take out their legs and make them crawl on the ground. Across the hallway from the key card room, you can find the gold ingot. You'll then have to navigate back to the uh, power control lever in order to open up the freezer again and provide power to the freezer. Once you provide power to the freezer and you have the level one key card, you can open it up. Inside of there is where you'll get your level two key card, but you'll also be able to find a treasure, which is actually a weapon. I don't know if this is the only case in the game where this happens, but it's marked as a treasure, but it's technically a weapon. Go inside the freezer room, solve the puzzle on the right hand side as you enter. I'll show you the solution here. Once you do that, the door will open up and reveal the gun inside, so make sure you pick it up. Watch out for the enemy that's probably chasing you into this room, and then you'll have to put the keycard into the keycard slot and defend it for about 30 seconds before you can pull it out and it's level 2. You'll then end up in the incubation lab on your quest to get a level 3 keycard, and you'll be able to hop in through the window into this lab where you'll need to go. In the backside little office area, you'll be able to pick up a biosensor scope. You pretty much need to grab this in order to complete the mission, but I'm going to be showing it here because there is also an achievement or trophy that you can grab. So put this weapon part into your case and then equip it to something like a sniper or a high powered pistol. And now what you want to do to grab the two bugs, one stone achievement slash trophy is go into the room and use that weapon to find the wrench enemy, preferably and then find two of their critical hit spots and shoot through both of them in one shot to grab the two bugs, one stone achievement. The first thing we can do in chapter number 14 is right as soon as we spawn, we can find the crystal ore in the room where Ashley is. Then we can use the little boost up here, which we need to use in order to proceed with the mission. So you can't really miss this. That's why I'm not showing you the map. It would be almost impossible to miss at this point. And once she goes through, she'll open up the door and behind the door on the other side of it, you'll be able to find a merchant request for the fifth version of Destroy the Blue Medallions. 
Now, next up, this is pretty important. This is your last shooting range for A, 4B, and 4C. There are also a couple of achievements or trophies tied to shooting ranges. So I'd highly recommend making a save at the merchant here and keeping it as a backup so you can come back to this if you want. You'll need to get at least an S rank on every single one. And additionally, you can get a trick shot achievement slash trophy. You need to take out five targets in one shot. The easiest way to get this is in range range 4C, use the sniper rifle on the enemies on the right, or use the wide shotgun to shoot all of the enemies when they appear in the middle. We're now going to go back to the merchant, and again, I'm going to recommend and advise you to make a backup save that you keep safe on the typewriter here so you can revisit the shooting ranges. But from the merchant, you can leave, walk forward into the steps in front of you, looking up and behind you to find a hanging container, which you can shoot down to reveal Alexandrite inside. Now we can destroy a couple of blue medallions. From where we exited the door, look over the cliff's edge to your right to find one. Go up the stairs and turn around looking at the building we came out of to find number two. And then continue along the path and drop down, looking into a dumpster on the left hand side to find the gold bangle. Probably not the best place to keep it. From here, feel free to take out all of the enemies, but if you run forward and keep to the left of the area, there's two red containers with a medallion in between them. On the opposite side of this small area, you can find another one near what looks like some kind of a oil barrel or some kind of a liquid storage container. And then the far back left side, look up and away from the staircase on this large container, huge container, and find your fifth medallion. From here, we can grab the next treasure by going up the stairs and then into the next room where some enemies will be waiting for you. But go to the left, and as you're approaching the end of the hall, look up and through the pipes, or just go to the end of the hall and look directly above your head. You should notice another container, which you can shoot down to reveal some velvet blue inside. You'll then end up in an area called Waste Disposal, or basically you're on your way to Waste Disposal, and you'll know that because you are quite literally going to go into the sewers here. And there is an emerald. As you crouch underneath the pipe, stick to the left-hand side to find it on the ground. Definitely not a place you want to store an emerald. You'll then eventually reach Waste Disposal. You'll use Ashley to basically hold the bridge uh, open for you. And at this point, you can cross the bridge and go into the first room, noticing the ornate necklace on some of the controls in the middle. After a little bit of progression, you'll end up coming across the merchant. There's a hallway with a red lamp at the end. You'll come through the door to find the merchant. On the right hand side, there is a merchant request called even more pest control for shooting four rats. We're actually going to head back to where we came from as there are four located inside of waste disposal. As you enter back where you came from, take a left hand turn to where you originally came from and you should notice one in the hallway that leads into the room. It does wander back and forth like all of them though. Next up, what you want to do is you want to get Ashley to hold open the bridge for you and there will be a rat on the other side of the bridge. It does run a loop around the center object, so keep your eyes peeled for it and just be patient and go check it out. But on the opposite side of the bridge, you should find your second one. Next up, what you want to do is you want to go to the very end of the hallways again, wait for your flashlight and watch out for the enemy if it didn't get dunked into the water like it should have. And then at the end of all of these hallways, cross the bridge back towards the controls. And here there will be two more rats. One wanders in the room on the left and the hallway in the middle. And then the fourth one usually wanders on the hallway to the right, as well as a little bit in between the hallways. So just keep your eyes peeled for both of them. They can be a little bit hard to spot, but if you use a headset, you can hear them. You can definitely see them if you're patient, and then you are good to go with all four rats. Okay. 
Next up, you end up in the large open area where you use the wrecking ball to get access to the next uh, room, basically. And here you would ride an elevator to the top. But instead, we're going to get a merchant request for the wandering dead. This is a hint that you should now backtrack. So we're going to use this door here as a shortcut back to the merchant that we interacted with earlier almost near the beginning of the level. We're actually going to backtrack to the previous chapter where we got the two birds, one stone achievement. And here I would recommend that you use the typewriter to make a backup save. The reason is we're basically going to be fighting a little bit of a mini boss. It's very easy to use too much ammo or take too much damage. And if you're unhappy with your run, it's really easy to pause the game and load your last save to try again and not waste as much ammo. I would personally recommend using a rifle with the bio sensor on it for this as we're taking out one of those parasites. This is like a mega parasite that has like six or seven uh, weak spots and it's going to be located in the middle of this incubation room. So take your time and use your rifle to take out all of its weak spots. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here so you don't have to watch. Uh, me struggle a little bit, but when you're happy with the run and take it out, you will complete the merchant request. You'll then progress through the mission where you're supposed to go, ending up in the amber storage room inside of this room. Before you try to leave, you can grab the crystal ore on the far left side on top of one of the boxes near a forklift. Then you'll have to go through the door and there will be a bunch of enemies which I have already taken out. Move to the right hand side following the tunnel to end up on the top floor and then turn to the right hand side looking through the door of this small building finding the Castellan sitting on the locker. Additionally in this area we can find a gold bar treasure by dropping down and going inside of the tent in the middle of the area. Inside the tent there is a treasure chest and inside that treasure chest is your treasure. Last but not least, at the very end of this chapter, there is a boss fight. Feel free to complete it in whatever means you feel necessary. I end up using the rocket launcher. But as soon as that boss fight is over, you will get the fighting knife. For chapter 15, we are nearing the end of the game. We're even going to pop a couple of achievements here pretty soon. So near the beginning of the level, after the helicopter shows up in the first little base, after all of the enemies are taken care of, head behind the building and you'll be able to shoot the container down to find the red barrel inside. A little bit later on, you'll come towards a stronghold with a anti-air turret. And just before that, you'll kind of come up this ladder and cross a small bridge. As you come up the ladder, look above your head before entering the bridge to shoot down a container, finding velvet blue inside. You'll then reach the cliffside ruins. There is your last merchant request here, which is for destroy the blue medallion six. So we're going to go and grab them right away. Move over to the right hand side. We're going to ignore a treasure real quick. Look down to the right to find one medallion. Look up right in the middle of the kind of bell tower to find a second medallion. Look up and to the left to find the third medallion. And then we're going to go and try to basically head inside of that structure by returning to the cliffside ruins and going down the ladder. Before you go down the ladder, though, peek into this little uh, hole in the wall and look to the far right to find your fourth medallion. If you can't aim at it, you might have to go outside of the hallway, aim through the window, but then come down the ladder, go through the archway, look down and to the right to destroy our fifth and final medallion. You will have to turn in this merchant request for it to count, though. Next up, there is also the Staff of Royalty treasure down here, so just continue along that path and find the treasure at the end of it, picking it up before you move on. 
You'll then fight off some turrets, open a gate and head inside of a building. And around the corner, you'll find the kind of blob enemy that comes out of the kind of punching bag that's hanging from the ceiling. I'm going to take them out to give us as much time as possible. But instead of holding A on the wheel to open the door and run through, go into the side room and look in the ceiling rafters to find Castellan number 15. And in this room, you can also find a treasure chest with the splendid bangle. Last but not least, at the end of the chapter, you will run into the merchant. You can finish up anything you have to do in the shooting range, as well as talk to the merchant to turn in your merchant requests, unlocking the Jack of All Trades achievement slash trophy. Finally, on chapter 16, near the very beginning of the chapter, you'll go through the first door and then boost Ashley up. She'll kick the ladder down and then you can climb on up. There are only three treasures left and one of them is in this first room. After climbing up the ladder, look above your head while on the bridge to find a container to shoot down with Velvet Blue inside. Next up, you'll reach the sanctuary, and if you wanted to continue the mission, you would go to the right. There are some enemies in this room. Instead, we're going to go to the left, crouch underneath this beam, and then walk up to like the altar slash throne. And here you'll find the Illuminados Pendant. The final treasure in the game can be found just after the sanctuary. You'll notice the Merchant Flame. Just next to that merchant flame, you can find a treasure chest with a gold ingot. If done correctly, your achievement slash trophy should unlock now for finding everything on the island. Now, because we are next to the final merchant of the game, now is a good chance to buy all of the things you would want to buy from him, including weapons, weapon parts and recipes. Assuming you have enough money, the weapons you can buy include the Blacktail Bolt Thrower TMP Riot Gun Striker, SRM-1903 Stingray, Broken Butterfly, Killer 7, Rocket Launcher, Punisher, and Matilda. Additionally, you can buy weapon parts including the Scope, Laser Sight, High Powered Scope, TMP Stock, Red 9 Stock, and Matilda Stock. Some will be purchased for credits and some will be purchased for Spinel. Additionally, we can buy recipes from the merchant, including the heavy grenade, flash grenade, bolts, attachable mines, and magnum ammo. Last but certainly not least, you can also buy an infinite rocket launcher from the merchant in New Game Plus for 2 million credits, so feel free to do that if you want everything. Next up, after defeating the final boss, you'll be running through the level on your way to an exit. You will enter this room where you are attacked, and in here you can find your final Castellan sitting on the right hand side of the room on top of some boxes. Once you grab this, the achievement or trophy should unlock as well. Then buckle your seatbelt. You'll be put on a jet ski for about a minute and a half, and you'll need to make it all the way to the exit without taking any damage. You can hit some of the debris in the water. However, you can't hit the wall head on. That will cause damage shown in the bottom right hand corner. If at any point you do take damage, just pause the game and load the last autosave and try again. If you make it out without taking damage, you will unlock the Smooth Escape Achievement Slash Trophy.
There are three more things to mention before I mention them. I want to thank you for joining me with Resident Evil Collectibles. I hope this series was helpful to you guys. Drop a like, recommend the series to a friend. I have enabled super thanks for anyone who feels so inclined. The last three things we can grab are from the extra content shop and are available after beating the game. You can buy the Chicago Sweeper by beating the game on professional mode with an A rank, the hand cannon by beating new game plus in professional without using a bonus weapon, and the primal knife for finding all 16 of the Castellans. A super special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Peace.